Hello there, and welcome to today's spooky bottle episode. So what did you think of that intro? Because as you probably guessed, or just looked at the title of this video, today's video is about scullies. However, I'm Australian, and uh, Halloween doesn't exist here. Because it's Halloween every bloody day in Australia. So, to help me speak things up a notch, I have with me the Skull Queen herself, Riot. Hey everyone, my name is Running Riot, but you can just call me Riot. I'm a content creator just like Bakari herself, and as you can see, I'm a scully. So the question is, what is a scully? Scullies, also known as skull dogs or skull beasts, are species that, well, show off their skulls. Scullies can be any kind of animal, humanoid, anthro, or feral, as long as they're showing off their bones. They can show features like half or full skulls, bony arms, ribs, tails, or just the entire skeleton. A majority of skull beasts are canine, so that's where you get the name skull dogs. But skull beasts can also be related to the Jersey Devil, zombies, or even wendigos. Being such a broad idea, skullies are not owned by any particular person and thus are an open species. Nobody is moderating them, so feel free to go absolutely nuts with your designs. Animal skulls as a symbol in general have been prevalent all throughout human history, but it's not always a symbol of death. In many traditions, it's actually a symbol of life or a new beginning. We also see animal skulls being used a lot in mainstream media through all kinds of different character designs. Now here's a throwback for you fellow 90s kids. In a dark, dark town, there was a dark, dark street. In the dark, dark street, there was a dark, dark house. In the dark, dark house, there were dark, dark stairs. Down the dark, dark stairs, there was a dark, dark cellar. And in the dark, dark cellar, some skeletons lived. There was a big skeleton. A little skeleton and a dog skeleton. Woof! For anyone who didn't know that show, that was The Funny Bones, a 12 episode show created in 1992 but continued to air all throughout the 90s and even the early 2000s. The skeleton dog was especially adorable and the first I'd ever seen anything like it. In the 90s, we also had characters such as the likes of Cubone from Pokemon. While its skull is just a headpiece it wears, it's not its actual skull, it is the skull of its deceased. Mother. Yeah, I I'm not joking, like, that's its canon Pokedex entries. It's, it's the skull of its dead mother. How is this a kid show? And over on Digimon, there were a lot more skull-based creatures, such as Greymon, Skull Greymon, Skull Sadamon, Cyberdramon, and plenty more. Yu-Gi-Oh! even had an entire archetype based on skull monsters. And then in the mid-2000s, we got Skull Animals. There were charms, plushies, stationery, other accessories, all themed around this bunch of dead animals. Oh yeah, they're dead. Like, their tags would always come with these morbidly adorable poems about how they became a skull animal. Dax had talent. You would be proud. I would take him to the park. He drew a crowd. He could catch the frisbee so easily in his teeth. At times I threw too hard, it would go in the street. One day as we played, he jumped over a beagle, only to be caught in the talons of an eagle. Yeah, thanks mid-2000s emo culture for that one. Skill animals are actually still around today, but definitely not as popular as they once were. Also, can I please just randomly point out, while I was doing the research for this video, I found out that Skull Candy actually tried to sue Skill Animals because of the similar Skull logo. But it obviously didn't get very far because, uh, they didn't exactly invent the Skull symbol that's been used throughout humanity for thousands of years. But yeah, just thought that was kind of interesting. So, what makes these boneheads so appealing? I believe that what makes them so appealing is because they're spooky, but you can make them cute. There's so many different species and types of skulls that the possibilities are endless. Skull beasts are inclusive for furries and non-furries, so let your imagination run wild. I'd love to see all your skull sonas, but if you don't have one, you could make one, or even skullify your current sona. What do you think, Bakari? Overall, skullies are pretty heckin' awesome. I am definitely a fan. I really should make one sometime. So you're probably wondering, where do I get a skull mask? Well, there's tons of places to get them at. Fuzzbutt Fursuits, Dreamvision Creations, or Miss Monsterface have a few for sale. 
Mugiwara Cosplay even has a tutorial on how to make a head with a skull base, but also a magnetic face that you can rip off to scare the daylights out of someone. So definitely check that out if you're interested in making one of those. I got my canine base from DVC. They also offer feline and burnt skulls. I've seen some really cool creations come out of DVC. There'll be more of that at the end of this video. Now, some of these skull bases have hinge masks. Hinged meaning the mouth opens. Ah. <laughs> some of these bases are solid, which means the mouth does not move. So, if you're interested in getting a skull base, make sure you pay attention to those details. Skull bases can be 3D printed or made with resin. I've seen some people go as far as making them with pipe cleaners. I absolutely love that. Like, I would have never in a million years thought to use pipe cleaners to make a skull head. Like, just goes to show you how many creative ways there are to go about making one of these. However, if you are like me, and you have zero time and or zero skill to make a skull suit yourself, you've got plenty of person makers to choose from. Uh, sorry if I pronounce any of these wrong, but we have Miss Raptor, Ornum, Hellyena Creations, Just for Kicks, Beast Cub, Personalities, Heart Slave, Sarah Cat, who is also opening for commissions very soon, Mugiwara Cosplay of course, Creature Creations and Costumes, good option if you're an Aussie as well, and City Mutt Fursuits, just to name a few. And even if you find a maker who doesn't have any examples of skull suits, it's always worth an ask. If a maker can work with resin bases, then they can work with skull bases. It's pretty much the same thing, but you don't even have to further face. Like, if I was a maker, I would be more than okay with that. I think it's time for a good old montage of some of Riot and I's most favorite skull suits. So sit back and enjoy. Sources to every single one of those are in the description, so please do go check them out if any of them piqued your interest. A huge thank you to Riot for collabing with me on this video. Bye everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. Ah, uh, you've been absolutely spooktacular, so thank you so much again. Please do not forget to go check out Riot's YouTube channel as well. Thank you all for watching, and remember, stay spooky.